MovieWeb.com. Hey, I'm Jamie Philbrick with MovieWeb.com, and I'm here in Los Angeles talking to some of the cast of the new film, Clash of the Titans, based on the classic mythology movie from the 1980s. Here's what Sam Worthington and some of the other members of the cast had to say about the new film. One day, somebody's gonna have to make a stand. One day, somebody's gotta say enough. If I do this, I do it as a man. But you are not just a man. There's a great scene uh, in the movie that's sort of like a throwback to the original with the owl with Bubo. And so I, wanted, Louis, I wanted to put a smash it on the ground. I think that scene gets to go a bit more, you know, yeah, well Louis treated that owl with a bit more reverence than he did us. <laughs> you know, rightly so, mind you. Rightly so. Did, did you know the reference? Did they have to tell you? How did you see? No, the no. I watched. Show? I watched the movie. You've been talking to Mads Mikkelsen, have you? Because I think Mads hasn't seen. Mads didn't see the original movie. Um, because as he said, this is a whole different, whole different kind of you know, push on it. Whole different take. So he didn't feel the need to. But I reacquainted myself with the original. Were you excited that uh, he, you know, kind of put stuff in for the fans? That's kind of cool. You yeah, know, those little touchstones. But you know, I've got a nine-year-old nephew. He ain't going to watch the original. You know, as far as he's concerned, he wants this Clash of the Titans. You know, we. A lot of people grew up with this and they remember it fondly from their childhood. You know, we're hoping to bring the childhood out, back out of this and start a new, new Clash of the Titans, so for my nephew and other kids. The original film uh, that this is based on uh, you know, kind of became a cult classic yeah. in a lot of ways and they were forced to use some low budget um, effects yeah. because of the time. And, but a lot of people sort of thought that the, the magic of that film was because of that. And so I was wondering, was that a concern on the set that with these big effects you sort of lose the magic of the original piece? I wouldn't know. I haven't seen the original, so I'm not part of that cult thing. Uh, but yes, that, that's obviously the charm in the first one. But I, we want to remake it. Uh, obviously, that's where we should put in. Now, two decades later, we can actually do different things than they could. So it's a, it's a normal, uh, it's a normal uh, evolution of, of the film. I mean, I think yes and no. There's something so quaint and so kind of you know primitive about the way that they made that film, and the technology at that time was so extraordinary for its time. And so I think you know, in the same way that this is, I think, pretty mind blowing for for our time. You know, technology is just a constant. Um, changing amazing things so therefore yes I mean I think you know there's part of us that kind of thing so you know we're gonna miss the quaint feeling of it and yet um, to really put the technology that we have access to now in use and to really explore those you know possibilities visually is you know it's just incre it's endless so it's that's a lot of fun you heard the witch's prophecy you will not defeat the Kraken much less Hades if you continue this journey you will die and Argos will still fall you're so sure why are you here to offer you sanctuary. Your blood is mine, Perseus, and that makes you a god. It's time you came to Olympus and started living like one. I'd rather die in the mud with those men than live forever as a god. You foolish boy. Man's entire existence is a gift of my grace. Somebody created man. You don't know much about us. We live. We fight. And we die. For each other. Not for you. Perseus really is having some problems with Zeus and, and, and you know, after uh, his father, his earth father is killed and, and all that kind of stuff. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about him, his anger with the gods and in, in well, your acting with Liam and those well, he's, a, he's, an, he's an adoptive teenager, you know, that's how I wanted to play him. You know, yeah, he, they kill his family, so he becomes Charles Bronson and goes on the killing spree. And I think that's, you know, that's the thing, we've all had problems with our parents, all of us growing up. And I just, that's how I wanted to look at it. If, the Avatar, if Terminator's a man being born and Avatar's a kid turning into a teenager, this is a teenager becoming a man. And, you know, it's a nice little trilogy for me yeah. to play. And I also think that then teenagers who go and see this movie have an action hero that they have an affinity with. You, bring your weapon. Have you handled a sword before? There's been no need. I see. The weapon is a part of you. Like the sting on a wasp. Stay focused. Know what's around you. Keep your balance at all times. You fall? <coughs> you don't. 
die. So in the film, uh, it seems like your character is sort of reluctant to follow yeah. along Sam's character proceeds in the beginning and becomes a, comes along in, in the end. Can you talk a little bit about that relationship between the two characters? Yeah, he's not sort of reluctant, he's really reluctant. I mean, this is a suicide mission, killing the Kraken, going through Medusa, retired soldiers, some young unexperienced soldiers, and one demigod. So there, I think it's a very bad plan. I want to go and hide the princess in the forest somewhere and then just wait it out. Uh, but I have to go, King's orders. Uh, so the only chance we have is he faces that he's a god as well, and he uses those powers. And that's my job, to open up his eyes. And uh, so this is the journey we go on together, me and him. What was it like working with Sam? You mentioned uh, you guys have a good relationship working on the set. Yeah, it was the easiest thing in the world. I mean, he's, uh, he's new, upcoming, big star now, but he's just down to earth, hardworking man, working with the script. A, a really good comment, you know. Uh, everybody was becoming a group really fast, and we had a good time. Have you seen what's happening out there? Have you even bothered to look? We serve as an inspiration. Hundreds of our men have lost their lives. Yet we celebrate. You're provoking the gods and you act as if there will be no consequence. Now what do you want? Should we be afraid? Should we be trembling and soiling ourselves in fear? The gods need us. They need our worship. What do we need of them? Look at my daughter. Don't. What could be more divine than her face? More beautiful than all the women of Greece? More beautiful than Aphrodite herself? The Olympians should envy her. We are the gods now. Uh, obviously, there's uh, attraction between your character and Sam's character in the film. Talk a little bit about that relationship, that attraction, and working with Sam. Yeah, it's a tricky relationship because it's a mixture of, of many things. I think there's sort of a, you know, she's enamored by him. Um, I think they also see each, they sort of see themselves in each other. I think there's a sort of, you know, the odd man out, the one who's going against the grain, and I think they have that connection. Um, and. Uh, you know, the, we had a great time working together. He's he's so much fun because it's a constant, uh, changing, malleable you know uh, environment, and he really pushes everyone to just sort of try anything and change it, and make it better, make it better. And so um, he was a blast to work with. I loved working with him. I only knew one great man in my life. My father. Now I know four more. And the woman. And whatever the hell you are. I know we're all afraid. But my father told me someday someone was gonna have to take a stand. Someday someone was gonna have to say enough. This could be that day. Trust your senses. And don't look this bitch in the eye. And you've got this great scene uh, where you're sort of rallying the troops right before you go to, to battle with Medusa. And it's mm -hmm. kind of like your Braveheart speech. Well, that's a bit Did different. I didn't want it to way? be a Braveheart speech. Like, I, I wrote that, and it was more a case of I wanted it to be. But you a bit wrote more, that, that yeah, speech, no yeah, kidding. Yeah, yeah. And because I wanted it, I didn't want it to be like a the Jake Sully speech or a Braveheart speech. I wanted it to be something that he signed to his family, that, you know, his new, his new family, that, you know, hey boys, we can do this all together. You're a bunch of good blokes and a piece of wood. And, um, you know, and, and we're all nervous. You know, I wanted it not to be more. Come on, we can do it, but more. I understand. And I think that's a that's a better kind of speech because we can all go. Yeah, I would be nervous too if I'm going to take on the Medusa. your favorite uh, scene to sort of do, your favorite set, kind of set Oh, I think we of. all enjoyed, or, well, enjoyed, we got boosted up, but we did enjoy shooting the Scorpion battle. We were doing it in separate groups, and then we came home at night, and we all went like, oh, look at this one, and look at this one, and we were all boosted up, uh, and we, we haven't seen the Scorpions yet, so we were like, I wonder what they look like. I hope it's not little ones, because they're not going to look like idiots here. So uh, that was funny. That was great. 
Well, I think there's a lot of it. You know, there's a there's a lot of moments where it's really about doing something together, where it's about actually coming together and, and ignoring all of the differences and all of the sort of you know status and everything that that exists in our world today. You know, and, and letting it all fall behind and um, being driven for one thing. And I think you know there's something really cool about that. I mean, mythology is so extraordinary. You know, that way it's just a big beautiful fantasy that is very much related to, to what we live now, you know. No one knows if they've got a successful film or not. You can't choose that. You know, if we did, we'd all be going to Vegas. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I would go and see this because it's a lot of fun. It's got, it's, we're not doing a history lesson. It's, it's a dude with, in a skirt with a rubber sword killing monsters. <laughs> it ain't that hard, you know. You've got the Kraken, you've got the scorpions the size of dump trucks, a winged horse. It's, it's meant to be a lot of fun. It's meant to be a good time out at the cinema where you and your girlfriend get your 16 bucks worth.